really feel I wrote a book to end all books on spirituality. <laughs> it's a book about totally you are your Bible. Live it. And if you need a reminding, I wrote a book about how I am my own Bible. And that's the only thing that you need to follow, is the own beautiful, strange, mysterious landscape of your own heart. There's nothing wrong with being yourself. Full stop. I'm essentially an addict for dogma. <laughs> I have the dubious distinction of being the first American Buddhist monk in the country of Burma, second most dubious distinction of sitting perhaps more meditative hours on my ass than anyone that I've ever met. And like, what do you think the fucking insight was? <laughs> I'm looking and looking and looking. It's like, what in the hell's going on? In breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get it now. Another year, give me another year here. Another 10 day retreat, another year. In breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. What do you think the insight is? Dude, you're breathing. Once I was walking through the jungle in 1990 on the Thai-Burma border with some group of students, one monk particularly I had known in the monastery, he had disrobed and he took up armed resistance along with many hundreds of other students. And I was walking behind them on patrol through this, this triple canopy jungle with government soldiers loyal to the dictatorship. And I as a pacifist, a Buddhist meditation teacher, uh, behind it all was judging him for taking up the weapon to confront dictatorship. And he could feel my presence, he could feel the judgment, and he turned around and he threw this AK-47 right into my chest and he said, Alan, how could you dare judge me? If it was your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your son, who was being killed and maimed and raped and murdered, what would you do? just simply stand there and be a dead, right, enlightened Buddhist meditation teacher? Or would you fight back? I dare you judge me. You've got an American passport. You can leave any time, he said. But what if it was you that was stuck here? What would you do? And it was right there that my ideals of pacifism and that so-called black and white delineation of right and wrong, of justice and injustice, of violence and nonviolence, shattered. And that's when I started to open up to something beyond my dogma, beyond my ideals, and it was the first cracking, if you will, of certainty. I owe it to that man. He was killed the next day. And eventually I realized, and it took me a long time to overcome my insight and in just staying with being alive, to eventually realize that true understanding is when you get up off your ass and do something profound with what a full breath affords you to do. <laughs> and so I'm fighting with my publisher about things that I should put in, and he says, you can't say that, Alan. Spiritual teachers can't be negative. <laughs> it's just being discerning and critical, and like, isn't it open for public debate when someone says they're fully enlightened and they say that they understand the totality of the universe? It's not fair to basically analyze that as bullshit? <laughs> no, Alan, you can't be Noam Chomsky and still be a spiritual teacher. Really, I can't say gurus basically are repressed, sexually horny men. <laughs> and that being in the now is way too small for really intelligent people. No, 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 no. I wrote a book about the release of oneself into the most free, liberated expression of being that is completely uncontrived. One asks the question, is there anything to do spiritually? And I say, you are doing it.
you're already doing it. Isn't there some special teaching to learn? You are doing it. The way you are is innately profound. Go live your dream.